What's going on, Mother Truckers? Uh, welcome uh, to Mother Trucker News. Uh, today we have a truck tech on the show. As you can see, he's wearing a helmet because he wants to stay anonymous. And I'm sure Truck Tech is a beautiful name that you just created uh, seconds ago for this interview. So I appreciate you so much. Uh, the situation in hand is a Truck Tech uh, worked for a self-driving trucking company and has some things that he would like to let us know. So Truck Tech, let's talk about it. What's going on? So uh, we recently had a video that you happened to to release that showed a crash from Too Simple. Um, it's a really unfortunate thing, and I'm hoping to explain how some of the technology works so that you guys can make your own decision as to how safe or not safe it is. No, I appreciate it. I appreciate that. So, you know, for the public and to all the truck drivers out there, you know, we thank you for being on the show and we just appreciate you just for the information. So, yeah, let's get into this. Um, let's talk about that video real quick of what it looked like. Uh, somebody sent me a video. And so basically it looked like as soon as uh, this autonomous, uh, I don't know, button was pressed or whatnot it looked like the steering wheel just turned left right away and went right into a median uh can you explain a little bit about uh, how you know self-driving trucks or, or the tech might work yeah so what i saw when i watched that video was the driver uh, if you haven't seen it you should definitely go look but the driver reaches over to the dashboard and he hits something and the steering wheel immediately turns really hard to the left and the semi comes over, narrowly missing a pickup truck, and bangs into a median, a uh, median K rail. Now, there's a few things there. I mean, he hit something on the dash. Um, if you're, if you know anybody from Too Simple, um, they'll tell you that's where the the autonomy button is at. So presumably, he's entering autonomy at that point, and it's an issue that happened right as autonomy happened. So, few questions that we have. Why is it that it would do something crazy like that right after it entered autonomy? Is this something like the, the software wasn't initialized property, properly? Is it that it didn't know where it was at in space? Under what, under what, uh, what criteria would the truck think that this is a valid move? A, how does the AI work? you know, in a semi truck uh, for the ones that might not know, and I don't know as well, you know, so please explain. So the way that it works, in most of the industry is they ingest a whole bunch of data from various sources. You generally have cameras, LIDAR, GPS. Sometimes you'll have recorded maps. And then there's different stuff that I've heard about with people in the industry playing with microphones. And basically whatever you can do to help the truck perceive its environment is kind of fair game at this point. It's still very early beta. Um, so the once it's got, say, an image um, from the cameras, that's ingested into the servers, and then they'll run it through what's called a neural net. So this is the, the fancy AI stuff that you hear about that's going to take over and do all of this really cool stuff. Um, the way that it works is not as, not as uh, transparent as you would expect. Mm. Um, when, you're, when you're training one of these things, you essentially take a thousand images and you say, these are pictures of shoes and you give it to it, and you give it another thousand images, and you say, these are pictures of shirts. And then at the end, you take a folder with a bunch of pictures, and you hand it to the AI, and you're like, is this a shoe? And it's like, I have an 80% certainty that is a shoe. And you end up, another one, it's like, is this a shoe? I have a 20% certainty that is a shoe. And so you have no idea what it is that it's using to identify shoe, what it's using to identify shirt. You just know that, hey, on my little readout on the screen, it says that thing right there, that's a mouse, that's a car, that's a bird, that's a sign, that's a whatever it happens to be. And it may not be. If you guys go and watch videos on YouTube of people that are doing the training, you'll notice that as the, say, camera moves across the office, there'll be a whole bunch of boxes that light up and disappear with labels as to what the different things are. That's the AI attempting to guess what is around it in space. And every time that that thing disappears, the AI has no idea what it's looking at. So Really? 
Yeah. Yeah. Now, that's in general, it's, it's only for fractions of a second. But, uh, but yeah, totally go online and look at videos of people training the neural nets. And you'll see video, you'll see these videos that look super complicated where there's all sorts of stuff flashing. That's the AI guessing what it's seeing. The other thing is you don't know how it's figuring this out. So the analogy that I like to use is you show it a whole bunch of pictures of cars and you say, these are what cars look like. And then you give it a whole bunch of pictures and it's, it's guessing mid nineties, high nineties. It can tell you what a car is sweet. So then you send it down the road and all of a sudden it's detecting cars that are 20 feet in the air. What happened? Well, it turns out in the thousand pictures of cars that you sent it, you had a bunch of blue cars. And so it associated the color blue with car. It has no idea what a car is. It just knows that something about all of these things that are in common equals car. And so when it sees the blue sign above the road, it goes, oh, there's a car right there. How would you like me to proceed? Once you identify that, you go and you're like, oh, this is a whole bunch of signs, this is a whole bunch of cars, and then you eventually get the AI to the point where it can tell the difference between the two. What, what is the mindset of these self-driving trucking companies? Why are they doing this? You know, you always hear, we're only doing it because there's a shortage, or, you know, or some companies are saying is, you know, we need more safe drivers and we think our technology would be better, you know. You know, what what are your thoughts about that? Is it is it that or is it straight up just they want to make some I think, money. I think it mostly boils down to capitalism. I think that if you have a truck driver that gets into an accident, it's expensive. If you have a self-driving truck that doesn't get into an accident, it's cheaper. So that's what they want to go for. Um, I have not seen very many large-scale business owners spend a ton of excess money for safety when they weren't compelled to. One is the technological level, is this is how the trucks work and this is how they function. The other is the cultural level. So you have to understand that we do things a certain way to get certain results. Now, if we look at a standard business, we have P&L, profits and losses. The idea is you're going to hop in your truck, you're going to drive from point A to point B, somebody's going to give you a check, you're then going to use that to cover the cost of your maintenance, the cost of your fuel, um, the cost of the depreciation of the truck, all of those fancy business things. And then hopefully there will be enough profit left over for you to go and do the things that you want to do. That's not how these companies are operating. The way these companies are operating is Silicon Valley growth companies. So from their perspective, the way they make their money is not through profit and loss. They make it through, through fundraising, through getting a new seed of investment. So they have to find some reason to be able to go to an investor and say, hey, we were worth $3 million a year ago. We're now worth $30 million because of this amazing technological improvement that we've had. And sometimes it's valid. Like Facebook has done some amazing things. Google has done some amazing things. Tesla has done some amazing things. But it's become a game. And so if you look at look at their numbers, especially post IPO companies, this goes for across the board in Silicon Valley. Um, I can tell you, having reviewed two simple shares, uh, they are making one point eight million dollars per year as of the last time I looked. And they spent $180 million to get there. So 99% of their spending didn't get covered by their income. That's not net, that's gross. And so the only way for this company to, to make money is to dramatically change its company structure or be acquired. That's how these businesses are structured. And so when you look at it through that lens, you understand the different things that they're going to do that we maybe wouldn't look super highly on. As an example, Let's say I gave you the responsibility to haul as many loads as you possibly could. You've got a team of 10 guys. What corners could you cut to haul those 10 loads as quickly as possible? Well, what if you didn't check the air in your tires? I mean, you'll probably get away with it. It's probably going to be safe. It's against the rules, but you know, rules can be bent within a, a certain margin. Uh, what about checking the oil? Eh, you know what, the amount of times that our oil is low and it actually blows up the engine, that's pretty small. We'll probably get away with that. Well, depending on how hard you're being pushed to make those 10 loads, the more likely you are to take those shortcuts. And so we see a culture in Silicon Valley self-driving vehicles of, hey, you know what, we'll add redundancy later. Hey, you know what, if something goes wrong, 
the driver will just take over. We don't have to worry about the computer being perfect. And from my personal opinion, I think that it's an unsafe attitude to have. Elon Musk is very famous for saying stuff like this. Um, if, you, if you can't do the job, I will find someone who will. And that's why Tesla is the juggernaut that it is today. He has been able to lead a team of highly competent, highly motivated individuals in a way that's produced a highly successful product. There's a lot of people who have tried to emulate him and failed. There's definitely a special sauce to that specific founder. But he will literally fire you if you aren't willing to put in the work. And by so, putting the work, I mean 50 or 60 hour weeks, not 40s. So at the end of the day, you are not surprised when you saw that YouTube video that uh, I uploaded of yeah. <laughs> that technology going haywire. Yep. The reason why I don't work in the industry anymore is because I was concerned of an incident exactly like that, but worse. To the public, to all the truck drivers out there, you know, these self-driving trucks, they're dangerous. And what makes it worse is after talking to you, Truck Tech, it sounds like they're cutting a lot of corners to meet benchmarks. When Tesla came out and said, we're going to start having self-driving vehicles, everybody started creating this story, this narrative about how they were going to be safer. And it's, well, a computer doesn't get tired. Uh, a computer is always attentive. A computer is consistent. A uh, computer doesn't break the rules. Like they, they created this giant story. We had insurance companies that came out and they were ready to offer you discounts for self-driving features. But they were doing this before self-driving cars had gotten on the road. So they were so convinced that this technology was going to be successful and it wasn't even verified. So the thing that really concerns me is that we're going to see things like you can't lift your pickup truck anymore because then Ford can't guarantee the safety on their self-driving systems. You won't be able to put different kinds of tires on potentially. You'll have to have a Ford certified tech work on your Ford certified car using Ford certified parts, which mm -hmm. means that our automotive industry is going to very much resemble the aircraft industry. We're going to go from a vehicle costing a vehicle costing somewhere in the realm of twenty to eighty thousand dollars for a standard commuter vehicle to two hundred and fifty to four hundred thousand dollars because of all of the maintenance that's going to be required. And we have a bunch of people that are just eating up this idea that the stuff's going to be safer, but it's not proven yet. I'll believe that it's safer when I see data that it's safer, and I'm going to hold my judgment until that point. I mean, these guys have done a lot of miles on the road. And they've only had a few accidents. Different companies have had different issues. And what level of complacent they were, you can make your own decisions on. But there's no reason to believe that we couldn't one day have self-driving trucks that are safer. But we need to make that based off of hard empirical data, not based off of a story we want to lull ourselves to sleep with. Yeah, and a deadline. <laughs> and a deadline. A very you tight know. deadline. You know, so no, I appreciate you so much. You know, I, I think the general public and truck drivers out there that will watch this, you know, um, will be in agreement that especially if an ex-employee of a self-driving trucking company uh, feels that is dangerous and does not want to work in that culture and not surprised at the video that I uploaded, you know, that's definitely something that, uh, hey, no, we have, FMCSA we have, needs to look at. <laughs> yeah, we have multiple self-driving trucking companies that are publicly traded at this point, and so their records are very much available for you to review. And what you'll notice is that there's a massive turnover in basically every one of them. And if you go and you look, a lot of these guys aren't moving from one self-driving trucking company to another. They're moving from a self-driving trucking company to a whole new industry. So you're not seeing a bunch of people who are, are still believing in the technology and just thinking this company wasn't a fit for them. We're seeing a lot of people that don't believe in this technology and are leaving for good. Hey, we'll keep it short and sweet, but I appreciate you for being on the show. Sweet. Thank you.